going on, guys? I'm Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. Welcome back to another Warrior Wednesdays where we discuss relevant topics intended on making you a better martial artist, individual, and leader. Today's topic of conversation is going to be Mushin, or the Japanese concept of no mind. What does this mean? What is Mushin? What is the concept of having no mind? I think it's best illustrated there is a movie that came out while I was in high school, not to date myself, but Brad Pitt's The Last Samurai. I always chuckle when I hear that, but it was a great movie. It actually really was. And um, there's a scene where he's training with the samurai up in the mountains, and they're dueling with wooden swords. And he's trying to block it, but he gets hit. Right, whack right on the head, just like they used to do. And he goes again to block, but the guy gets through, he gets hit. He tries it again, he gets whacked, right? Until eventually, <clears throat> this old man comes up to him, and he looks at him. He points at his sword, and he points at him, and he goes, too much thinking. This is the concept of motion. Operating in a flow state without thinking at all. Purely intuitive state of being. When we operate from a state of mind, no mind, we are operating from a purely intuitive state and operating from the knowledge of many lifetimes, quite frankly speaking. This concept of being able to quiet and still the mind is nothing new. It's, in fact, been around since way before the samurai. Buddha would refer to it as the middle path. In other words, the avoidance of both extremes in life, extreme pain, extreme sorrow, or extreme pleasure, extreme happiness. Miyamoto Musashi in the Book of the Five Rings, a very famous samurai author, discussed this a number of times. And he said, be detached your whole life through. I think he said, be detached from desire your whole life through. In the Bible, Jesus talks about this. He said, if your body or your mind becomes single, your whole body will fill with light. I think he actually said, if your eye becomes single, your whole body will fill with light. The ninja had a concept that walking between the polar realms of lightness and dark was the path to enlightenment. Many, many warrior cultures have this concept as part of their philosophy and their doctrine. When we go through life, every day, our minds are cluttered. We're thinking about past events. We're thinking about things that transpired, good and bad. We're thinking about opportunities that are yet to come, anxieties about the future, things that we'd like to accomplish. We're always thinking about something, right? And for those of you out there who do still your mind through meditation deliberately, will know how difficult it can be sometimes to sit down and actually just still your mind. Let the thought, thoughts float by. It's more difficult than it seems. Sometimes it's easier than other times. Martial artists, dedicated ones, that is, professional ones, strive to enter into this state because fighting from this place is extremely powerful. Like I said, you have access to the knowledge and understanding of many lifetimes. Through being able to quiet and still our mind and enter into a place where we are thinking yet not thinking of anything at the same time, Entering into a flow state thusly, we are able to dissolve the barrier between thought and action, and this leads to precision and perfection. How do we enter into a state of motion? Well, one way is through meditation. Now, when I say, med med say meditation, I don't necessarily sitting down um, and breath work and all of that stuff, mantras, breath work. We're simply quieting the mind through quiet, still meditation. That is one way. Another way is moving meditation. Those of you who roll, who do jujitsu or 
even those guys out there who hit pads and do Muay Thai or whatever, box, wrestle, you'll know that when, especially though when you're sparring, you're not able to think of anything except what's right in front of you. If you're stand-up sparring or grappling, you can't think of anything except let me fight, right? Like, if there's a punch coming at me, I got to return now. Let me move here. Oh, oh, this, right? Oh, I got to get this choke. Let me get here. Call the grip, throw. This is a moving meditation. This is why we feel so good. This is why, frankly, jujitsu heads get addicted to it. When you walk into your dojo or whatever you want to call it, walk onto the mats, you could be walking in there with a lot of stress, but when you walk out, you feel considerably lighter because you are able to, for at least one hour, completely forget about everything except what's in front of you. It doesn't have to be through the martial arts. The samurai were big on calligraphy, right? Painting all the kanjis. This is a moving meditation. All you're doing is concentrating on very neatly and accurately with a fine brush Painting these kanjis as delicately and as precisely as you can. There are so many forms of a moving meditation. The samurai of old have ha, had a school of archery where it was exactly this. And it's very similar to the concept these days of shooting with both eyes open. And you'll find that when you're in that flow state, or even if you're not, but you start shooting at the range, right? Especially when you do it with both eyes open, you eventually get to an intuitive space. Some point during your practice where, boom, accurate shots. And you're just, you're taking accurate shots. You're not thinking. You're just feeling the trigger reset and bang, 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 bang. You're almost not even looking, but you're just intuitively hitting those targets. The jam, The samurai did the same thing with archery. But they would also throw a little bit of meditation into it as well. When we enter into battle, and I'm talking physical battle in this state, if you have trained your muscle memory, this is all you need. Your body knows what to do. Your mind intuitively knows what to do. Your spirit, your being knows what to do. Allow it to work. Don't even try, right? Too much thinking. This is... A real concept. For those of you guys who do box or do stand-up sparring, you'll know you get hit in the face a couple of times, and all of a sudden, especially when they're hard punches or kicks, you you start going into a space where you think about it. You feel a little bit of, bit of pain, and all of a sudden you're going, oh, fuck, now I got to, what do I got to do? Now I got to really concentrate on blocking. I want to get hit again, and there's net. But then have you ever gone and just play sparred, touch sparred, dutch sparred, whatever? When you're really not that afraid of getting hit, it's what? Oh, it's intuitive. It's flow. Parry. Return. All right. Ah, oh, I almost got kicked. Now lean back. All of this, it's much more intuitive. It's not until we start thinking consciously that we start messing things up. This is why going into this state of no mind where mushin can be so incredibly important, potent, and powerful. This goes for social occasions as well. I mean, this is why people get social anxiety. They overthink things. In an argument, this is an incredibly powerful place to work from. I remember one of my girlfriends used to like to argue a lot. And I was just so tired of it. Um, at some point, I would just detach. And she'd be trying to argue with me about things, and I would just be so detached from the conversation that I remember I would just say things, and she would shut up because I was so right about it. And there would always be like insightful things. And it wasn't because I was necessarily an insightful guy. Uh, it was just because I was operating from a place of like, I was there, I was bored, but I wasn't really attached to the conversation at all. And so right or wrong, whether it made me look good or bad, I would say these incredible, incredibly insightful things just from a place of like, whatever. <laughs> and it would generally shut her up pretty good because she knew she couldn't argue with it. It was truth. When people hear the truth, when people really like they hear the truth and it goes to the core of them, there's not much they can say about it. Generally, these days, most of us don't live our lives going around fighting physically. 
but we do fight emotionally with our words through our actions things like this and to be able to go through your day in a state of motion operating from the space between is incredibly powerful this is why you see monks gardening doing things like zen gardening bonsai trees different chores and tasks sweeping right I mean, there's other reasons they do this besides the fact that they're just cleaning or gardening. But really what it is, is a moving meditation for them. And these monks have trained themselves to also say mantras while they train. You know, uh, Christian monks will say prayers. Buddhist monks will also say different types of prayers. You go into this moving meditation state when you're solely concentrated on one task. When we silence the noise, we find balance, and this hones our intuition. So now you might be asking yourself, uh, man, like I, I'd like to be able to do this. I'd like to be able to enter into this state kind of whenever I want, right? Like if I'm upset, I want to be able to shift my mind right into this state. And there's ways to do it. Too many for me to really go over with you today, but I recommend that you look into it. You can do that. It's going to take years of training and practice. I'll be honest with you. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. But if you have determination and patience, you can train yourself through meditation, through moving meditation, through things like NLP to be able to start to access this state of mind when you do need it. Breathing. Breathing is such an important thing. Very important to the process. Many martial artists study for years and are never able to fully access this power. You must study diligently to attain it. However, you can reach this state and you can enter into this flow, into this state of mind, no mind or motion. I hope this was helpful. I appreciate you guys watching. If you're watching all the way to the end, thank you for being with us. Um, all of our loyal subscribers out there, thank you so much. If you're not a subscriber, consider doing it. Consider hitting that button down there, putting on the notifications. Every Wednesday, we put out a video here on Warrior Wednesday. Every Saturday, we put a hand-to-hand -hand combative training video out there as well. Consider joining us as a channel member. It definitely helps us out. It's deeply appreciated. I don't do a Patreon or anything like that. But whenever you guys join the channel as a member and kick in what you can, when you can, definitely appreciate it. I will see you guys next time. Check out GutterFightingSecrets.com. By the way, we have some excellent hand-to-hand -hand training courses all online there for you and some other great programs as well. Please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And I'll see you on the video this weekend, hand-to-hand -hand video. Cheers, motherflowers. flowers.